NBA bets of the night. Sports Center on ESPN right after PTI. Then there's this. Blazers and Clippers last night, and Kawhi Leonard returned to the floor after sitting out Wednesday. He scored 18 of his 27 in the fourth quarter in the Clippers' win. But before the game, the NBA fined the Clippers $50,000 for comments made by Coach Doc Rivers that were, quote, inconsistent with Kawhi's health. Rivers had told reporters Wednesday that Kawhi felt great, but the NBA <laughs> concluded that the statement was not consistent with the tales of Leonard's knee injury. If I could just very quickly recap all the things that happened here for you. They don't want him to play because they don't want him to hurt the knee. The NBA wants to say his knee is hurt because they don't want him to be resting if he's fully healthy. Kawhi now is bent out of shape that they announced publicly the details of the injury and they, fire, they fine the franchise $50,000. Bottom line of all this, Jay Williams joins us this morning. Um, what do you make of this next chapter in this load management saga? Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna lie about this situation, you have to be consistent with your lying throughout the entire course. It's like me saying me playing hooky from work, Rini, and saying that I'm sick, and then taking a picture of myself out with my boys partying that night right. and posting it on the internet. You can't you can't fib on yourself, and I think that's what the Clippers did here. Um, you can't say he feels great if you held him out of last game. Uh, we all know what they're doing, but you have to still abide through the through the NBA's rules. Yes, I, I, you know what? I totally feel for the NBA's role in this and I'm on their side completely because down deep in their hearts I believe the people making these decisions in the New York offices of, of the NBA are on my side of this debate they don't want these guys sitting out these games and they can't just tell the world yeah this game isn't important enough because we want Kawhi Leonard to be healthy when we get to the end but at the end of the day it's a charade right we know it's a charade he obviously could have played the other night so I, I if you're going to find him $50,000, I guess it doesn't make that much difference. No, it doesn't. And, and what's $50,000 in the big scheme of things with, in, with, with a team like that? The, the mean, man, the owner of that Steve team Ballmer, is worth exactly. $20 billion. Like, great, we'll take $50,000. He has $50,000 right now in, in, the, in the cushions of his couch. At the end of the day, and this is just the way it's going to be all year long, right, with a guy like Kawhi. Maybe he's not the perfect example, though. Is this something we're going to see all across the league? I, I think it's going to be something we're going to see with Kawhi. I think it's also going to be something we may see with guys. Like LeBron James may have to do this later on throughout the season. Like, do you want LeBron James in this stage of his career to try to play 82 games? I'm not sure that's in your best interest. We also have a rookie that we may talk about doing oh. this with later, Wait which I know you're going to blow your mind, but still, we're going to talk about it. Wait until you hear the fight that we're going to have coming up on the show. We're load managing rookies hey, in the NBA. You'll see. I have an idea. Schedule 92 games. These guys will then play 82 games, <laughs> and everything will be absolutely fine. We have just missed breaking news. Repeating again, Ohio State defensive end Chase Young, who everyone acknowledges is the best player in the country and very likely the first pick in the draft will not play tomorrow against Maryland due to a possible NCAA issue from 2018 that the Ohio State Athletic Department is looking into. The school made that announcement today. Bobby Carpenter is looking into it. We'll pass along any further details we get as soon as we can. Meanwhile, we run the hurry up in the NFL starting with Bills, Browns. Mark Sanchez, what are you looking for in this game? Did I draw the short straw? Why do I have to talk about the Browns? Let's talk about I'm it. talking about the Bills. Let's talk about the Bills defense. <laughs> Listen, they're a top 10 defense on third down and the Browns are really struggling to stay on the field on third down these guys are going to get after him look for Jerry Hughes to wreak havoc on this Browns offensive line look out Browns this could be rough for you don't look now Buffalo is six and two Vilma you're keeping an eye on Christian McCaffrey in Carolina's game against the Packers let's talk about it yeah Christian McCaffrey one of those uh, sleeper MVP candidates and his, his skill set in the passing game forces Green Bay to have DBs cover him, not linebackers. So I want to see the matchup between Christian McCaffrey and the DBs, the secondary for Green Bay now. It's a chess match, right? So if you're going to put all those defensive backs in the back in, on the defense, then now watch them run the ball the same way Jordan Howard's running all over him, the same way Josh Jacobs did, the same way Dalvin Cook is screaming for a touchdown. That's going to be a great matchup to see between Green Bay and Christian McCaffrey. Bobby, you're next. Jared Goff against the Steelers defense. Defense, what are you looking for? I'm looking at that guy right there, Cooper Cup, the number one receiver on third down in the NFL. You saw how much Goff struggled last year. Without him on the field, he was great. And then on the other side of that, it's going to be Minka Fitzpatrick in this Pittsburgh defense when he's not on the field. They have not got a turnover this season. When he is out there, they have 11 turnovers, Greeny. The Steelers' defense is much different with him, and that is going to be the game inside the game. And then Lewis Riddick, Sunday night, Vikings, Cowboys. What's the key to this one? The key is for Dallas to remain true to who they are, which is a smash-mouth blue-collar football team 
led by that guy, Ezekiel Elliott, setting the tone. Dak Prescott playing off of that and continuing to be an efficient thrower of the football and hitting guys like Amari Cooper down the field and really executing Kellen Moore's offense. And then on the defensive side of the ball, turning loose this pass rush, Demarcus Lawrence. Look, I'm just telling you, I watched him up close and personal last Monday night in New York. This guy will wreck your dreams now. And Kirk Cousins, you better know where Demarcus Lawrence is. And if he doesn't get you, I can tell you this, Robert Quinn will wreck your dreams too. They're both the boogeymen. The boogeymen, they exist all over the place, okay? All over the place, not just New England. These two guys are boogeymen for you. I love that expression, wreck your dreams. So let's talk about, uh, Bobby, I know you put together some tape on Kirk Cousins. What are his dreams this week? (laughs) His dreams are going to be facing this front of the Dallas Cowboys and what they're going to have to do and how they're going to be able to get the football out. So let's take a look at this. Kirk Cousins, 29th in the NFL when pressured with only four guys, four down Lining right there, Khalil Mack coming off the edge, one of the best rushers in the NFL, but it's a simple dip and rip as he's going to come around the edge and be able to put pressure on Kirk Cousins. He has two answers in Thielen and Cook down the field. He gets rid of it on rhythm and time, doesn't do it, strip sack, puts his team in a bad situation. Now let's look at this Dallas defense. I'm glad you went there with our guy, Mr. Lawrence, at the top and how good he is. Demarcus Lawrence rushing against Carson Wentz with only four down again, coming off the edge. Using a great pass rush move. He's wrecking dreams. Two open receivers. Carson Wentz has Dream to wrecker. Him. He can't get to him. Strip sack. If you're going to give Dak Prescott a short field, Mark Sanchez loves that. He can defend right. him all day when you only have to score from 20 yards out. So the dream record there. Mark Sanchez that, in defense? No. Never. When he gets never. a short field, he feels good about it. So, <laughs> Cousins, this does not, so just to sort of make sure we're, we're clear on what we're talking about, this does not feel like a good matchup for Kirk Cousins against that Dallas pass 29th rush. in the NFL when pressured by four guys. He can't get the ball out of time. And they're playing in Dallas where Dallas is the prototypical front-running team. They jump out on you down there. It can be lights out quickly. How about the other side, Vilma? How about this Vikings defense against Dak and company? Well, the Vikings defense is good. Not as dominant as I want to see them. Now, I'm talking two years ago when I would watch, if Case Keenum was still the quarterback, I would watch and look forward to watching the Vikings defense because they were so aggressive. In particular, guys like Xavier Rhodes at the cornerback position, they were that was a, the staple of Zimmer's defense. Now, they still rush the passer very well, still top 10 in defense, all of that. I understand it, but I want to see the same way that the offense has stepped up their game, I want to see the Vikings defense impose their will on the Dallas Cowboys and step up their game. In particular, Xavier Rhodes, I want to see the matchup between him and Amari Cooper because Zimmer is not changing his defense. He's not changing his style. He wants to see that his guys step up, and this is the time to do it. All right, so I know what everyone really wants, though. They want to know who I think is going to win that game. They want to know who I think is going to win every game on the Sunday schedule, <laughs> and they want to know how my comedy writers did this week. Let's do it in less than two minutes. Every game on this Sunday schedule, go. Chiefs at Titans. If Andy Reid coached every team, every quarterback would be great. So it doesn't matter who quarterbacks his this week. They beat Tennessee by 10. Bills at Browns. If anyone else coached the Browns, they'd be better than they are. The world has left them for dead. But I have not. Cleveland rocks. 27-21. It's not over yet. Cards. Bucks. If you like defense, avert your eyes. Both quarterbacks are going big. 800 yards of offense. I'll take Jameis over Kyler. 31-27. Jets, Giants, rather than make a pick on this irrelevant, hideous, totally unnecessary game, I instead Googled New York Jets jokes. And here was my favorite. You know why the Jets don't have a website? Because they can't string together three W's. Also, fire the coach. Falcons, Saints. Speaking of firing the coach, the Falcons will be the most attractive opening in the league. This Sunday, not so much. New Orleans in a breeze, 104 to 8. Ravens, Bengals, what's going on? Half the league is flat out terrible. Lamar Jackson's going to run for 6,000 yards. Baltimore by a million. Panthers, Packers, much better. Christian McCaffrey may be the best player in the league, but he doesn't play the most important position. Rodgers with the bounce back. Packers by eight. Lions and Bears, oh my. Last gasp for both in the crowded NFC. Matt Stafford is almost silently having a brilliant year. Leads the league in passing yards per game, 19 touchdowns and five picks. Detroit by a field goal. Dolphins, Colts, Miami won a game last week, which is both the good news and the bad. Back to their losing way Sunday, regardless of the Indy QB. Rams, Steelers, Pittsburgh has life and always plays well at home. Rams going to miss the playoffs? Yes, they are. Give me the terrible towels, 23-17. Finally, great one, Vikings, Cowboys, Zeke and Dalvin, Amari and Stefan. It comes down to this. I ride with Dak in a big spot over Cousins. 27-24. How about them Cowboys? Yes. What do we think? 
I love it. But how do we do? Those, the, you know what? The, that Rams Steelers game is an interesting one right there because I picked the Rams in that one, but I can see exactly where you're saying uh, how that's going to go. I, I, I love New all York the Bible. Yeah, but that, that okay. The Jets okay. joke, that was okay. a good one. That, did you that's really Google good. that one? It was the only one I could use that was family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you Google New York Jets jokes, 